This is our opening press conference, and today you will hear brief remarks from our new um, president and CEO, Mr. David A. Henson, and our honorary co-chairs, Congresswoman Frederica Wilson and Congressman G.K. Butterfield, and we are expecting an arrival from our CBCF board chair, Congressman Cedric Richard. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm delighted to join a group of exceptional leaders. Congressional Black Caucus Foundation Board Chair Representative Cedric Richmond, who is on his way, and outstanding annual legislative conference co-chairs Representative Frederica Wilson and Representative G.K. Butterfield. Welcome to ALC 2019. Before I get started, I want to give a brief moment of recognition on this September 11th to those Americans who lost their lives and the families who lost loved ones on this day here in Washington, D.C. and in New York City and in Shanksville, Pennsylvania, a mere 18 years ago. I also want to join the many voices who are focused on the plight of our brothers and sisters in the Bahamas, who have lost over 50 of their citizens to the devastation of Hurricane Gloria. Throughout, the, throughout ALC 2019, you will hear much about the significance of this moment in history. Our conference theme, 400 years, our legacy, and our possibilities reflects on the incredible journey that African Americans have traveled in this country since the first Africans landed on these shores in 1619. Our travel has been a journey of unspeakable pain and immeasurable achievement. We have gone from being the free labor that undergirded the U.S. economy to social, political, and economic influencers, not just in the United States, but around the world. The 55 members of the Congressional Black Caucus are a testament to just how far we have come. And I want to add that this is the largest group of black representatives in the history of our nation. But AOC 2019 is very much about bringing people together, young and seasoned, scholarly and those who have graduated from the School of Hard Knocks from every region of our nation to engage, to learn, and to develop solutions around the many pressing issues that challenge the black community. Black women in leadership, wealth building, health and wellness, social justice, foreign policy, the plight of African American boys and men, the impact of climate change, and the future of the black community are just a few of the topics that we will consider this week. Every member of the Congressional Black Caucus is engaged in a valuable activity. Some are leading interesting sessions on topics such as the U.S. Census and voting, while others are giving voice to the history of our people. For example, Representative Terry Sewell is hosting a wonderful play called Four Little Girls About Four Young Girls Who Lost Their Lives in the Birmingham bombing. 1963. I encourage all of you to set specific attentions around the relationships, information, and insights you will acquire this week. And I encourage you to stay engaged when you return home to your families and your communities. AOC 2019 is about change and preparation for a brighter future. Thank you so much for coming, and I hope you enjoy the conference.
Uh, it was at the Sheraton Park Hotel way out on Calvary Street in Northwest. Uh, the tickets were $100 for the dinner. And uh, it was a grand event, but it was a, a social event. Uh, but down through the years, the ALC has evolved into what we see today. Uh, we are not just a, uh, a group of people who get together for social purposes this week. We are about serious business. And the foundation understands that and makes sure that this week is a very informative week. Uh, but it will be concluded uh, this weekend with a powerful prayer breakfast on Saturday morning uh, with Yolanda Adams as our as our guest and Howard John Wesley, the distinguished pastor of, of Alpha Street Baptist Church as the, uh, as the preacher for the hour. Saturday evening will be the Phoenix, the Phoenix Awards dinner. Uh, I encourage all of you who can to please attend all of these events this evening. But thank you, David, for your incredible work. And, and I know and you know that you cannot do this alone. Uh, if you did not have very capable staff working with you, uh, this would not happen. And so thank you to all of you. Uh, also, thanks to uh, Cedric Richmond, Congressman Richmond, who is not here now. He is in a hearing. Uh, as Congressman Wilson and I are supposed to be in a hearing right now, we're going to be departing momentarily. But thank you publicly to, to Cedric for all the work that, that he does for, for all of us. And Karen Betts, uh, the phenomenal chair of the Congressional Black Caucus. Uh, Karen is from California. Karen worked so very hard uh, in taking our 55 members to a level uh, that we have never seen before. And finally, to my co-chair, Congresswoman Frederica Wilson from uh, Southern Florida, a woman who is not only a powerful voice uh, in Florida, but a powerful voice here on Capitol Hill. And it's been a pleasure uh, to work with, uh, with Frederica over the last few months to make this week happen. Uh, Frederica has brought some new ideas into the conversation, and, and she is to be thanked and appreciated for that work. You know, when we went home for the August recess, I thought that everything was in the hands of David Henson. Uh, but Sister Wilson continued to work with David and his staff to, to put some ideas on the table, and you will see the fruits of their labor as we go forward this week. And so thank you. The, the theme for this week is something that we struggled over a few months ago, and we, we finally distilled it and got it to a, to a very short uh, phrase, and it's called 400 Years, Our Legacy, our possibilities. When we talk about 400 years, and I'm not going to give a history lecture today, even though it's very tempting. I, you know, uh, Jim Clyburn is our resident historian in the caucus, but I, I'm probably in second place. And, and I would love to talk about uh, what this 400 years means, but let me just see if I can give it to you in a few words. Uh, 1619, the first Africans landed in the Commonwealth of Virginia. 12 and a half million African citizens were transshipped across the Atlantic. Some 600,000, not all 12 million, uh, some 600,000 of those 12 million ended up in the southern, on southern plantations in the United States. Not all 12 million of those survived the voyage. Some 2 million did not, million did not make it. Why? Uh, some jumped overboard. They could not take the humiliation. Others died from famine and disease, but uh, some 10 million actually arrived in our country. And this was pre-Constitution. This was before the United States Constitution was enacted. But finally, the Constitution was finally finalized, uh, and it was, was put into effect on March 4th of 1789. At that very moment, there were 700,000 slaves in the South, 700,000. But what goes unnoticed from time to time is that there was a provision in the Constitution, Article 1, Section 9, that protected the slave trade for at least 20 years. You may not know that. Written into the original Constitution was a provision that said that, that the transshipment of slaves from Africa could exist for at least another 20 years and there, there could not be any constitutional amendment that would change that. And so that set the date of being uh, January 1st of um, 20 years later, whatever that would be, 1808, was the effective date that Congress could even address the, the transatlantic shipment of slaves. So finally, on January 1st of, of uh, 1808, the transatlantic shipment of slaves ended. But the point that I want to make is that slavery did not end.